Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. Oftentimes, when creating tutorial videos, I've found myself needing to shift focus and seamlessly zoom in on different elements. While achieving these effects with keyframes is not overly complex, it can be quite time consuming, not to mention the challenge of ensuring smooth transitions between the different zoom levels. But today, I'm going to introduce you to a smooth zoom effect template, which simplifies the entire process of making seamless zooming effects without the need for tedious keyframing. In just a few clicks, you can create the zoom in and zoom out effects and draw your viewer's attention to specific parts or objects within your scene. There are four common scenarios for focus transitions, as we saw in the preview earlier. The first one is a simple zoom in and zoom out. The second one starts with a zoom in, shifts to another focus, back to the first zoom in, and returns to the original at the end. The third one is a series of transitions chained up and back to the original image when we conclude the scene. Lastly, we have a scenario that simply zooms and shifts the frame without animation. This can be effective in certain contexts with a clean and direct visual impact. Now, let's see how the smooth zoom template simplifies the process and make it truly enjoyable. To create the simple zoom in and out effect, add an adjustment clip to the track above the image. Drag and drop the smooth effect onto the adjustment clip. Right away, a zooming effect is created at the beginning of the clip, it zooms into the center and doubles the image size by default. We can go to the inspector, change the zoom center parameter and zoom size. or enable the fusion overlay and adjust the zoom center directly in the viewer. OK, this is good. To smoothly transition back to the original view at the end of the clip, set the animation out time to a value greater than zero. Let's set it to 15 frames, the same as the animation in time. This automatically creates a smooth zoom out animation back to original from the enlarged view. When the animation is enabled, these animation time settings control how long each animation runs. If the time is set to zero, the animation will be disabled. When changing the zoom size and center point, make sure the playhead is not in the middle of the animation otherwise the changes made will not reflect the final result. We can also disable both animations together by unchecking this option. In this mode, the zoomed view is always displayed, regardless of the playhead position. Any changes to the zoom settings instantly reflect the zoomed result. If the animation is running too fast or feels jumpy, we can increase the animation time, for example 25 frames. Now it runs longer and smoother. To have a more natural look, we can enable the motion blur. However, as it involves extensive calculation, I will keep it off for the demo. These drop down lists have predefined curve options to adjust the animation dynamics. For example, change the out curve to back for the incoming animation and set the in curve to back for the outgoing effect. This adds a touch of agility to the animation. Of course, you can always play with these settings and find something that suits your preference. If we don't want to start the animation from the very beginning of the video, we can move the adjustment clip to a position where the zooming should start.
To change how long it stays as zoomed in, we simply extend or shorten the adjustment clip to the desired duration. So, this is the first scenario using the Smooth Zoom template, super easy and flexible. Now let's look into the second scenario, a more complex one. To add these transitions, we repeat the steps as we did before. Add adjustment clip, apply smooth zoom effect. Change the zoom center and size. This is good. And starting here, we want to zoom in further on building B, to have a more enlarged view. To do that, we split the adjustment clip. Select the clip on the left side, and make sure in the inspector, the animation out time is set to zero, so that the outro animation is turned off, because we want the view to stay as zoomed in. If we move the playhead through from the first clip to the second one, we can see that the second clip is now restarting the animation at the beginning, just like a new adjustment with the same zoom effect from the previous one. But we want the second one to start from the zoom view, not the original one. Make sure the right side clip is selected. Go to the inspector and click the set zoom result as start button. This resets the animation start view to the zoomed result, seamlessly continuing playback from the previous clip. Change the zoom size to 5. Adjust the center. As we play the timeline from the previous clip, it smoothly zooms in to reveal more details of the building. And as we continue, we want to zoom out back to the previous view. Similarly, we split the clip. Now we want the left side clip to reverse the zooming effect and return to the starting view at the end of the clip. So we go to the inspector, activate the out animation by setting the animation out time to 15. This adds a transition back to building B at the end of the clip. Now take the clip on the right, if we play the clip, it runs the same animation at the beginning as the previous clip, zooming in further on building B. But for this clip we want to remain in building B position, so we simply uncheck the Enable Zoom option in the inspector. This essentially deactivates both zooming and animation, always displaying the starting view. Moving forward, say here, we want to conclude the scene and return to the initial view. Split the clip and select the one on the right side. Enable Zoom. Click the Reset Zoom to Default button, this resets the zoom center point to default, and size to 1. Alright, we've now completed the transition sequence for the second scenario. To adjust the timing, all we need to do is drag the edit points back and forth, no more mess of keyframes. This image on the screen shows the sequence of transitions and how they work together between clips. Now for the third scenario, shifting the focus among a series of objects in the scene, the steps to achieve this are very similar to the previous one. Add an adjustment clip and apply the smooth effect. Move the playhead forward to see the zooming result. Change the zoom center to building B. We now have transitioned the focus to building B. Split the clip where we want to focus on building C, select the right side one. Set zoom result as start. Move the playhead forward to the middle of the clip before adjusting zoom settings. Or we can turn off the animation and start adjusting immediately. Change the zoom point to C.
Enable the animation when we are done with zooming settings. OK, this is good. Now we want to transition to building D. Repeat the previous steps, split the clip, select the one on the right side. Set zoom result as start. Change the center point to centralize the building D. At the end. Here, we want to return to the original view. Again, split the clip. Select the right side one. Set zoom result as start. And reset the zoom settings. By repeating these steps, you can easily chain together additional transitions if needed. Similarly, adjusting animation timing is as simple as moving the edit points around. This diagram shows the sequence of transitions used in the scenario. The last static zoom scenario doesn't offer much to showcase here, as we've already covered all the details of using the smooth zoom template. As you already know, we can disable animations by unchecking this animation setting in the inspector. Use the example we did just now, select each clip, uncheck the option. Now we have the static version of transitioning focus through different parts of the scene, and it creates the impression of shifting views from different shots. All right, that's all for today. Utilizing the smooth zoom template could save us hours of time, especially when it's crucial to shift focus among objects or elements in scenes, such as in tutorials, meeting scenarios, and beyond. I hope you enjoyed the video and will find the template useful, please leave comments below if you have questions or suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.